to high school there for a little while. And uh, is there an echo, a delay on my voice still? Or? No. Oh, it's just me tripping out. <laughs> um, um, and uh, yeah, that, that trip was, 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 a lot happened on that trip. A lot of different things happened on that trip. Uh, it was my first time away from home, really. And after that, I did not want to go back home. <laughs> um, but, uh, what did I learn? I was almost thrown off that trip the second day. Um, so I got grounded on the campus. I wasn't allowed to leave for like a month. What'd you do? I didn't, well... <laughs> The truth is, I didn't do anything. Like, I was with a guy who got, they said, here's the thing, they try to make an example out of, out of they don't want people getting drunk, you know? And, and some guy got, came home smelling like alcohol and got busted, and I was with him. And like, I didn't, I you know, I didn't, they didn't catch me. <laughs> I mean, I knew better not to get that drunk the first night. So, uh, I was a freak then. I used to wear a skirt to the lunch cafeteria. I was nuts. I had dreads. I was crazy. But, like, they, you know, some places in, in, in America you could do that. Like, you no, know, hippies wore skirts, and, you know, but not in Israel. They haven't seen that shit before. You know? What the fuck is wrong with this guy, man? Um, now I was, I was a crazy teenager. Uh, but that, that trip gave me a sense, a certain sense of uh, identity, you know, because I was looking to figure that out, who, you know, who am I, you know, where do I come from? And I love this music, but that's not necessarily me and my culture, where I come from. I don't really know where my culture, where I come from, you know, I'm from the s suburbs, you know, and uh, there's not much, you know, I didn't know, you know, who am I, where, what's my history, you know? And when I went there, I felt something ancient inside of me come alive, you know, something real. Um, and that was what started me. I mean, that Rosh Hashanah, I mean, that Yom Kippur, I ate, um, I, I found a place to eat, you know. I mean, I was not religious by any means in those days, but I did, I did um, find food in Jerusalem on Yom Kippur. <laughs> Which is hard to do, let me tell you. There's not a lot of places serving. Um, Chinese food, not even Chinese. You know, it's not like Christmas. You know, you Chinese food on Christmas. But, um, but yeah, um, that, that's, that definitely opened me up to it. And also let me see different, like, I was used to seeing one type of Jew, you know, for the most part, you know, in where I grew up, you know, secular. You know, pretty much, and one one strain of Judaism where it wasn't really that much that important. You know, it was something that was for some people it was, but for me and my friends it wasn't. You know, and um, when I went there, I started to see how there's so many different, from the taxi driver to the Hasidic guy praying at the Wailing Wall to everything in between, and and I started to say like, whoa, Judaism is. It's, it's not what I know, it's a, it's a whole other thing out there, so, you know, that's what happens when you go to Israel. <laughs> okay, whoever, uh, go ahead. Oh, we have microphones now. Is it on? It is. <laughs> hey, man, it's got Hello, Chris. Hey, Chris. <laughs> um, you've achieved What do you like about school? <laughs> I like education not like and asking famous people questions. <laughs> so you like this event? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. Um, what I wanted to ask you was, you've achieved noteworthy success at a very young age, and that's what everybody in this room is aspiring to do. And hopefully each and every one of us will be able to do that to some measure. But you can give us first-hand advice what to do once you reach your dreams? How do you keep the fire alive? How do you how do you keep yourself going so that you don't feel 
like everything else is less than. Well, I've always had that problem of feeling, um, the feeling getting caught up in wanting to feel more, you know, wanting to, wanting, wanting more. I'm a greedy ass bastard. <laughs> Oh, if I'm not, if I'm famous, I'm not famous enough. If I have some success, it's not enough success, you know. The grass is always greener. And not right now I'm working on trying to just come to terms with day to day, enjoying life. You know what I mean? Because it's so easy to get caught up in wanting to be successful in your dreams and all that and being driven. And, and, um, and I'm now just starting to figure out how to that sometimes it's too much, trying to get too much is, doesn't do anything for you, it takes away, you know? So I'm trying to just cut back. Thank you, Jason. Alright. Yes, sir. How you doing, I'm Michael. Hi, Mike. I uh, appreciate you uh, entertaining us this afternoon, or this evening. And what I like about school is that I graduated and I'm able to come back to eventually <laughs> and appreciate them. Uh, so thank you, Dan. Um, what I like about school is I, I'm not there anymore either. <laughs> no, just um, That's not where you're going. No, not, one thing I, I, I was wanting to know is when, when I'm jamming with my friends playing music, we like to freestyle, we come up with our best material. How do you think that you come up with your best material? Is it just freestyling and starting to jam, or you got something in the back of your head that you've been rhyming on, or how does, it, how does your music flow? Uh, how does your mm -hmm. best stuff that you appreciate the most flow from the beginning? Well, like this stuff we're doing now is mostly improvisation, so we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and this feels pretty damn good <laughs> right now. Sometimes you gotta craft out things, you know, and work out things. Combination. Things, different things happen in different ways. Thank you. Yeah.